And I want to let Guardians know that as this opportunity opens itself, I am going to work hard and let Ghanaians know that PNC is a vehicle that can carry you to the Jubilee House. We are going to hit the ground running because it is very belated. We are just with about three months to go. So I call on PNC members and all sympathizers, all those who had given up hope that the vehicle is awake again and we are driving straight. We hit the ground running. Former flag bearer of the PNC, Edward Mahama, consoled losing aspirants and urged them to prepare for future elections. For those who contested and lost, let me say this, you have not lost, you have won. Because today marks the day when you go and take stock of what you did for this party. And then today also marks the day when you have to start learning. When you lose, you go back and revise your notes. And then you come back and maybe you will win comfortably. In conformity with the COVID-19 preventive protocols, the People's National Convention's Congress, unlike previously, was organized across the 16 regions of the country. The UDS guest house in Accra served as a coalition center where the results from the various regions were collated and announced by the Electoral Commission. In all, 23 rules were contested for at the National Delegates Conference of the Party, with Janet Asana Nabla elected as the General Secretary, Abbas Nuhu as the National Organizer, and Hidaya Sunjun Ibrahim as the women's organizer. Nicholas Ekoyamwa's report for Joy News. And I have the flag bearer of the PNC, David Apacera, uh, in the studio with me. Uh, so congratulations are in order. I mean, <laughs> I knew you as MP for Bulga earlier, yes, yes. and uh, now you are the leader, if you like, the presidential candidate of the PNC. Yes. How do you feel? How does your win make you feel, first of all? Well, uh, I'm humbled and, uh, uh, because um, uh, to be elected a leader of a whole political party, uh, it means that people uh, have confidence in you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it means they have watched your life, they have looked at your integrity, they have looked at your experience, and uh, these, all these uh, informed the decision of the party to make me their leader. And uh, it is something that I actually never dreamt about, but it came. Mm, I see. When I saw that the party needed a committed person to take it up. I see. So I decided that I will come. You have some very big shoes to fill. Uh, you know, uh, the former uh, flag bearer was, a PN, uh, was a, um, Mr. Mahama. And uh, a lot is expected of you. But first, tell me, why did you decide to contest the flag bearership of your party? Well, um, you see, uh, PNC, I, I joined PNC in 1992, and I saw how vibrant PNC was. And uh, because of the way the party was, that is how come I was able to come on the party ticket and come to parliament. Mm. Um, I have seen of late that the party is not that way. Mm. And I believe that leadership is required to fire up any organization. And so if PNC is not making it, then we need somebody who will be passionate, mm. who will have real commitment, mm. and who has the experience to go and lead the party. And I think I, I, God has blessed me with these qualities. Whatever I want to do, I believe I should do it well. And I decided that let me give myself up and then see if the rank and file or the delegates so decide, um, I, I think I'll do something about it. And that's what informed my decision to come on board. I see. Yeah. Uh, you earlier mentioned that the PNC was not going the right way. What was wrong with the party? For which reason you believe that you needed to step in and help change the narrative? Yes. Um, there was a uh, kind of division at the national level that was not the best. Mm -hmm. And um, PNC was a bit projected like a proxy of another party. That was not good also. And um, also, 
um, you can imagine that three months to election that we are holding a national congress and electing um, a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. How does that inure to the benefit of the party? Mm -hmm. And these are the difficulties and challenges that the party was facing. So, I, and I thought that with me, I, 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 I have gone through the meal and I have tested myself that I'm not the type that will go that way. I will unite the party, refocus uh, uh, on our objective, and that, that's a see huge how it challenge goes. unifying yes. the party because. Yes. The divisions remain. That's a major challenge for you to unify the party and bring the rank and file together again. You have less than two months to, you know, uh, campaign towards the election. How are you going to bring the party, the rank and file together so that you, you know, perform significantly better than you did four years ago? Yeah, I, I think part of the unity comes from working uh, without time to think about personal differences. Right. If we begin, and then our focus is to make sure that we have all our polling stations, mm -hmm. executives properly elected and working. And then our focus is to make sure we have MPs coming to parliament and possibly having me in the Jubilee House come the next election. Certainly, people who have no time uh, for personal uh, differences. <laughs> I, I think that is the best way to go. And so, just as I said, we are going to hit the ground running. And uh, everybody is to be on board. Mm. There's nothing like this man is this or that. We have no camps. Mm. And so I believe that uh, with this in mind, uh, with my able uh, chairman, mm -hmm. the former honorable member for uh, that's uh, Moses uh, Daniba. Moses Daniba. Yeah. Uh, we are all committed to the process, mm. and we'll get it going. Mm. But I wonder if commitment is just uh, enough. But uh, let me ask you, you said you're going to hit the ground running uh, almost immediately. Uh, what is the plan going forward so that you can garner as many votes as you can from the electorate on December 7th? Um, because as we uh, speak, the yes. party's manifesto is not out yet. Yes, yes, yes the party is yes. not campaigning on the ground. Yes. So what's the plan going forward? Uh, certainly, um, I'm giving myself uh, at least uh, two weeks from now for us to launch a manifesto. And um, we are going to meet with regions and then the cons uh, constituency executives. And we want them just, just to go down to the grassroots and get polling station executives fixed properly. And then um, once we launch the manifesto um, i'm sure that we are, we are going to take off from there and uh, i believe we have able-bodied young men who are interested in this party who have a conviction and a passion to carry this party forward and and when that happens um it will be a, a kind of a spontaneous uh, you know uh, building of the party okay so you made the point about you know uh, the pnc and you using uh it as a vehicle that can carry the members to Jubilee House. How do you intend to do that? What is your message to the Ghanaian public, the electorate? Yes, um, Ghana, we have had a taste of uh, two major political parties. And um, I don't think all is well with Ghanaians. Um, we still have the challenges. And we have a vision for Ghana. And we believe that when we come to power, we, we will tackle the issue of, uh, you know, the, the, the value of the city. And I believe that we, if we have to be self-reliant, uh, we have to uh, make sure that we don't go importing finished petroleum products because we have a refinery here. That takes a lot of money. That takes billions of dollars, bringing in finished products to burn on their streets we will make sure that we have it done in Ghana. And we don't need to import rice. We have the fields. We can do that. We can produce enough rice and even export. And that is also taking a lot of dollars. That's how come the dollar is rising against the city. And then also, we want to look at the cost of energy. You can't industrialize without energy being cheap. Otherwise, you can't. You can't run your machines with a costly uh, 
um, cost on, uh, on, on, on energy. So we have to look at that. We have to, you know, look at the protocols or the laws or the kind of, uh, what do I say, uh, say agreements that we have signed in the previous um, about electricity generation and so on. And we have to position this and make sure that our cost of energy comes down and then we will have an industry um, picking up and then we, we at least mechanize, agri and so on. And so we have a lot of vision. That's a and lot of we'll ideas and yes. some will say it's all over the place. But uh, what is that major policy that you intend to push in the event of winning the election? I mean, the N MPPs, a free senior high school, is their major policy. The NDC, the NDC talks about its big push, $10 billion uh, push. What is the PNC's main policy that it's going to push? For which reason Ghanaians would say, well, I mean, this is an alternative we can't consider. Well, um, certainly, um, like you are saying, um, we had talked about free education. We talked about it long ago <laughs> in, in, in our manifesto. But somebody else Yes, and it. somebody is implementing it. It's good for us. It's good for us because when we proffer uh, ideas, we hope that they are taken up and it's helpful to the society. Mm. Um, so that is good enough. And we are going to continue that. Mm. We are going to continue that. But what I want to say is that we have to make sure that um, we don't over rely um, on the foreign imports. And we can do this simply by making sure that we export even finished product instead of importing finished product. Mm. If we begin to do that, our dependence on the dollar will, will fall, and that will make the city stabilize. And we are going forward to make sure that we industrialize. And that means we have to um, um, make sure that uh, energy is cheap. And if it even means that we have to go in to, uh, let's say, uh, nuclear energy to produce cheap uh, energy for ourselves, I think we are in an environment we can do that. All right, let me ask you, when do you intend to put out your manifesto? Already, uh, the two major parties have put out their manifestos. There's a lot of discussion and analysis around that. When does the PNC intend to put out its manifesto? Uh, that's what I'm saying, that uh, <clears throat> we need, uh, at least for now till 9th, uh, my focus will be to get 9th ninth, uh, ninth, uh, uh, of this month. Okay. Uh, my focus, I mean, um, to get our parliamentary candidates and then our flag bearer and everything filing, you know, so that we, don't, we are not out of time immediately. But we will set a committee to do, to look at, uh, revisit our manifesto. And I hope that uh, by the time we file, we should be able to come forth with our manifesto to Ghanaians. Um, Certainly, uh, I have been saying that, you see, uh, we come from a Krumah's tradition. And uh, I, if you look at the manifestos of the two major parties, similar, mm. very similar, the same policy outlook. It's only uh, how you go about it. That is maybe mechanism or the processes. Okay. So what prevents us from becoming, even as Nkrumah was preaching, I one see. party state. So you can expect but your manifesto This is not the line. wish of Ghanaians. So we will come off with also our manifesto on the 9th course. of October uh, but not 9th but I hope from that 9th going from 9th going okay but right. we'll give ourselves a very uh, short time to prepare for it because time is not on our side mm, I yes. see yes. now Mr. Abzera how, how, how do you respond to those who are so skeptical of the party you know winning the 2020 elections they say that the NDC and the MPP have edged you out and Parties like the CPP, the PNC, and the PPP are no longer considered serious or serious contenders for the presidency, if you like. How do you respond to that? Well, people are right to hold that view. And that's why I want to change it. You see, uh, politics, you don't do it sitting in the comfort of your, your offices or your home. It's not a question of uh, making... Uh, television appearance, and then that is enough. It means you have to lace your boots well and go to the field. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to inspire a move from the grassroots, okay. a movement that will 
sweep across the whole country and, and then engage the youth and let them know that there is time to make a change. You see, the truth is that if we continue to only depend on two political parties, we, have, we are setting for ourselves a bit of a danger because, you see, then they become more confrontational. If there is a, a third party, third option, then you see that uh, you don't have that uh, uh, real acrimony that we, we see certain times. So I, I believe that when I get into the field, this scenario will change. Are we likely to see a third option? People have been talking about the fact that they are tied with the NDC, they are tied with the MPP, but they really have no option. But they talk about a third option, really, uh, should we be considering, is there, a foresee, is, is there a third option in the foreseeable future? Yes, certainly. Like I'm saying, by the close of uh, next election, you will see PNC as a third option. <laughs> I can assure you that. Yes. What you say <laughs> as a third option? Are you saying yes. PNC is winning the 2020 well, elections? Well, I, I am believing that we will win. I am believing that we will win because I hear people saying, look, we, we are tired of MPP, we are tired of NDC. And I know that... Uh, they need somebody they can be, feel very safe to hand over the reins of government to. And I, I, I think that I'm well positioned and people know um, that we have held ourselves, we have portrayed some um, level of integrity and then we can, we can handle power and make it run well for Ghanaians. All right, uh, David Apacera is the newly elected flag bearer of the People's National Convention. Uh, he had me there in that conversation with him. He says the PNC will be the vehicle that they will use to get to the Jubilee House at the end of December 2020. Um, I wish you all the best. All right. You're still watching Election Brief with me, Arbor Kumsi.